some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Well, hello and welcome back to the channel, everybody. In today's video, we find ourselves in a courtroom in Michigan where a Sovtard is, well, rather upset that a officer pulled him over on the streets for an off-road vehicle. And, well, he claims it was on his property anyway, but that's besides the point. I mean, he goes on to only prove that when it comes to the law, he's nothing more than an incompetent moron who needs help from an attorney. But will he get one? Probably not. So let's go ahead and sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Matthew, is it Crucel or Crucel? Crucel. Crucel, come on up. Actually, we've got a motion today, don't we? We do. You got a motion filed? Yeah, oh, yes, absolutely. She had, she, she, I, I actually had issues that she discussed before I filed. But, but the court reporter needs to pick you up. Here, the, you don't have to be at the podium, but at least have a seat at that table where that microphone is. Uh, threats, cars, and hey, I'm, I'm under duress. I'll cross. You're under duress? How are you under duress? Well, Your Honor, in the state of a motion, I have, there's a text sheet, uh, probably just word that since been signed by a judge. Um, I have lawsuits filed and all of this stuff right now, which I know that they just Hold on, that. brother. Wait, wait, wait. I'm just asking you to have a seat at the chair with a microphone. Oh, I understand that. I'll do it. Oh, Your Honor, don't you realize that you're dealing with the soft art here, and they love to uh, bastardize words from the dictionary, no matter how asinine it makes them look. Okay. The front check is up here. That's fine. Just make sure you talk about the yeah. microphone. Absolutely. Okay. All right, you can sit down. Okay, so I think this is your motion to dismiss, right? Yes, I have a few in there that I've been repeatedly trying okay, to well, Which one do you want to start with first? Well, the, the recent one I filed, um, the motion to eject the swearing in and all that based off the fact that, uh, like I said, I was sent the default motion that, I don't know how it even got signed on past days, but it was never signed or anything. Um, I was also defaulted out the fact that there was a citation that never even presented a, a court appearance. Okay, you're giving me too many stuff. issues. You're talking about swearing in. You're talking about a default judgment. What, which? Just pick one issue. We're going to deal with it one at a time. So um, what well, do you want I, to deal with first? You want to deal well, with my main default? motion. Well, yeah, yeah, the default. Okay. So was that on the civil infraction? Uh, fail to disclose the CPL. Um, I suppose that's what it was under. Yes. Okay. What? Well, don't suppose. It's your motion, brother. Tell me what it is. Well, it keeps getting. I mean, that's the only civil I have, I have numerous. Hold on. Lots of Hold on. That's here. the only civil infraction I see with your name on it. So I'm just confirming that we're talking yes, about it was that charge. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. So do you know why the default was entered? Did you miss a deadline? Did you? Well, they, I was, actually, I was notified. I was called by um, people that I know within here on and the police chief stating that I had a missed appearance date. I never had an appearance date scheduled, but I went back looking at the citation. There was no date. And actually, how fast it got. Well, did you take a second look at the citation? Maybe it said something else on there. Oh, I don't know. Contact court for appearance or something like that. I mean, did you ever think to uh, actually look at the ticket rather than, uh, well, do the soft hard thing and think it was uh, unconstitutional or something like that? I mean, that's standard fare for you freaking morons. Issue with raises real concerns to me. And then once I received the default in okay, the hold order. On, hold on. Let's one take one thing at a time. So you said you never got an appearance date. Correct. Do you have a copy of the ticket? Because I've got a copy. Yeah, I of said the it's in there. It's attached to my motions. Okay. Do you have a copy yes, of the ticket? I do. Okay. Then I'm going to ask you to look at that copy of the ticket because my copy of your ticket says contact court for appearance date. It's, yeah, it says contact court for appearance date where it says appearance uh, where it says appearance date on or before. There's nothing. Okay. <laughs> You'll have to excuse my friend. He's a little slow. <laughs> All right, dum dum. Uh, apparently, it does say contact court for appearance date on there. So, uh, Mr. Brainiac, what else have you got? What other excuses can you conjure up from that empty garbage receptacle on top of your shoulders? Okay, but it says time frame. it says contact court for appearance date. That no, means well, the monkey's on your back to contact us. I will also also on the bottom of the tickets it says if you do not if you fail to contact court within the specified amount of time. There was no specified amount of time on here. Wow, dude, this is just sheer laziness on your part. I mean, one would assume if one had a brain, a fully functional brain, like the majority of us, uh, you would contact the court right away to get the proper information. 
But I guess not only are you a dumbass, you're just flat out lazy. What a great combination you've got right there. Lazy and stupid. One has to wonder how you've made it this far in life. I had no idea what I was supposed to contact the court. I was dealing with trying to get my attorney. Let me ask you this. Did you contact the court? I was, I was in the, again, as I said, I had no, no sort of any time frame Mr. to Crusell, contact Mr. the court. Mr. Crusell, this is going to go a lot easier on everybody if you just answer the question I ask. I'm going to give you plenty of chance to give me any argument you want to give. Okay? So don't feel that you have to force your argument into every question I ask. The question was, did you contact the court? Well, Your Honor, I would have contacted the court if I hadn't specified. That's court. a yes or no. So I'm going to take that as a no. You didn't contact the court. So after 14 days on a civil infraction, if we don't hear from the defendant, we enter default. It was less than that, actually, when I was defaulted, Your Honor. Less than that from what? From whatever this was issued. And like I said, I was contacting Well, attorney. once again, I'm going to draw your attention to the ticket. My ticket, which I think is the same one you've got, is dated February 3rd. Correct. Okay. So that's when it was issued, February 3rd. Correct. So when was the default? When did you get notice of a default? <sighs> um, actually, I received, I'm sorry. I know I got the thing in the mail. When did I get this? This says that, I don't think it specifies the date. Well, did you make a note when you received this it? This told me, this said I had a, I, I, don't, I don't remember exactly what date I received this okay. in the mail, but this was scheduled for March 8th. Okay. So well, that was even less than a But what is that that's scheduled? This says it was for my order, uh, the motion affidavit saying that I was defaulted and saying that I needed to pay bond and an orange a warrant would be issued. And I said, okay. again, that was never. And that's dated what? This was dated 3 8. That I needed to appear okay. on or before 3 8. Okay, so that was March 8. You were defaulted February 22nd. Okay. Which is, yeah, again, there was no dates. I had no nothing. I had no okay. notice well, of any well, sort of. Well, once again, you're not hearing what I'm telling you. The monkey was on your back. The ticket clearly said you contact us. You never did. And it also specifies right here. If you fail to appear by the date specified, and then on the bottom one, even for the other one, if you fail to answer a citation by date specified, there was no date. Okay. Okay, let me explain this to you in a simple manner that even an idiot like you could understand. Uh, when you get that thing in the mail... You read a part on there that says you must contact the court for further information or something like that. And therefore, you have to call the court ASAP. Otherwise, well, you'll get defaulted because you don't know anything that the court does. The court has the information that you need. There you go. Contact the people that have the information. It's that bloody simple. But, of course, we're talking about a uh, brain-dead softard here who just uh, couldn't navigate his way out of a wet paper bag. There was no dates. Okay. Do you have anything to add? I do, Your Honor. Uh, Go ahead. Mr. Crusoe brought this up when they were in front of the Honorable Judge Martin. She did set aside those, the default of the civil infraction, irregardless of whether or not he showed up. Which I object to the set Sir, aside. do not interrupt the lady. Did she interrupt you? No, then don't do that. Let's be civil. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Judge Green, Mr. Crusell did bring it up again with the Honorable Judge Green, and she she declined or denied his motion based on the fact that it was moot because the Judge Martin set it aside. So the default already been set aside? Yes. Brother, why'd you just waste five minutes of my life? Since March 14th, Your Honor. Which I object to that because they- You object to your motion being No, right? I object to them setting aside my motion. You are so dumb. You are really dumb. For real. Uh, dude, you object to setting aside your motion? Uh, dude, uh, this basically means that you're working out in your favor. They're going to look it over again and see uh, if there were any errors or anything like that on their end. Dude, you really need a lawyer to help you navigate all this stuff. I mean, obviously you don't have the... Uh, mental capacity uh, up there in that empty head of yours to be able to figure any of this stuff out. And I no, 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 wait, wait, listen. She tells me Judge Martin set aside the default based on your motion. Yes, but I was never told any of that prior to any of that. So you want to argue about the fact that you got what you asked for? No, what I'm saying is the fact that the due process was violated is what happened in this whole problem. When I was defaulted, due process was violated. 
So what? She set it aside. Not listen when you, okay, we set aside it caused damages to me because of what happened with the default. Well, explain to me how you were damaged. First off, there's threats made against me, right? Clearly he's threatening me to insurance. No, no, no. I didn't ask you about threats. Money. I said, how were you? You said you were damaged. I'm asking you, what was the damage? That the fact that I was threatened to come in and pay money or warrants. How was that damage? And I was being threatened by here on police, which I have on record. What's the damage? What do you mean? The fact that I had to come in and pay money or I would have been, there had been issues. What money did you pay? Huh? What money did you pay? 280 bucks. I had the receipt and everything. It was all attached to my motions. They just keep trying to set it aside. And Judge Green never said a word Stop. to me about any of that. It's been set aside. Counsel just said, Judge Martin set aside the default. So what that means is procedurally, it's like it's a brand new file. Understood? Yeah, but that's according. Yeah, but that, especially now with the new Chevron overlay, that's just saying that she can, she's just trying to set it aside that there's no issues. She didn't try to set it aside. She sat it but aside. But she can't. She can't just set my rights aside. She's not setting your rights aside. She set it this fault aside because you asked her to. Well, so if it's set it aside, then the money should be returned, correct? Well, I don't know. Did she address the money? No, know. she never did. No one did. I sir, in my motion. Sir, I'm going to hold you in contempt the next time you cut her off. The first contempt, $100. The second contempt, a day in jail. Are we clear on the ground rules for my courtroom? Is that a yes for yes, the record? Your Honor. Okay. I'm giving you all the time you need to talk. Don't talk over her. Okay. I understand. I'm sorry. There's just been a lot that's been going on with this. And yeah. I'm the first time I'm seeing it. So I'm trying right. to get to the bottom of it. You're right. All right. Mm -hmm. So we started with what motion do you want to talk about first? You said your motion to set aside the default. That was granted by Judge Martin, is what I'm hearing from Prosper. So that motion's done. Would you agree? As long as my money gets returned, then I guess it's taken At care some of. point, trust me, your money will either get applied or returned. Next motion you want to talk about? The dismissal based off of fundamental uh, violations of my fundamental rights and due process. Okay, well, tell me, tell me more. Okay. You have, hold on, let me, let me just cut to the chase. You have more than just the fact that you think you have a right to travel Yes, Your Honor. Actually, and that's I, denied. I'll just cut to the chase. That's denied. I don't buy into that argument. Now, you can appeal that decision to the circuit court. You understand how that works? District court decisions, you can appeal. Absolutely. Okay, hold on. I've denied that motion. We're not going to talk about that motion because I've denied it based on your argument that you have a right to travel and don't need a license. Oh, but Your Honor, according to him, the Supreme Court says we don't need driver's licenses well uh dude if the supreme court had actually said that then uh everybody would know about it not just the uh, uh minority of morons walking around thinking that they know what the supreme court actually said i mean come on now dude you can't be that freaking incompetent can you oh wait uh, yeah you can be i'm sorry so please carry on is there anything else you want to hang your hat on for dismissal? Well, I do object to the setting aside of my motion, Your Honor. I'm not setting aside your motion. I'm denying your motion. Well, denying. I object to the denying. You can't object. Motion. You can appeal. Okay. But I'm okay. just letting you know, I'm saying for the record that I am objecting to your denial of my appeal. That's fine. Okay. Circuit court judges have bills to pay too, right? So you appeal me to the circuit court. Do you have any other argument why these cases should be dismissed? Yes, absolutely. Well, honestly, Your Honor, like I said, I even have lawsuits. They've received my lawsuits to the Huron Township Police Department overall. Hold on, hold on. I don't know anything about a lawsuit. How would you suing the, the township work as a reason to dismiss these charges? Because the initial traffic stop and everything was an unlawful stop from the get. I was okay, but that's got nothing to do with your lawsuit. That might be the basis of your lawsuit. So you want to talk about whether or not there was a valid reason for a lawsuit? Yeah, absolutely. Stop? Then make the argument. Yeah, Your Honor, so prior to the um, prior to me being pulled over by this officer, I was actually um, in contact with several law enforcement officers that are friends, and actually two that are currently working within Huron that had um, confirmed I had every lawful right to be doing what I was doing. The one even pulled up to me and my wife at a gas station in, in town, and we had, or in Sibley and Middle Belt, right near actually where I got pulled over. And we had discussed it and talked about it, went on about our day, and this was all prior to this incident. Uh, dude, uh, that could be construed as hearsay uh, at this point because you didn't bring in your uh, cop buddies to uh, confirm what they said. And besides, 
if it's not up to the cops to decide if you're right or wrong on this, they're just there to uh, uphold the law to begin with. And here's what the Michigan law says about that. And it's backed up by the 10th Amendment, you dumbass. I had had two other interactions with this officer where I had specifically told him, I've already been, I've already been confirmed and doing lawful, I'm well within my lawful rights. I have it documented. You need to go talk to this sergeant that I've been talking to and a couple other buddies. Right? I, I gave him that opportunity. It was shortly after that. And this, I had had that confirmation well prior to me even being pulled over. Okay. So then um, this officer seen me leaving my house, pulling off my dead end dirt road, proceeded. And I, I, like I said, I even told him, I've already had this day. I've already right. had this. You need to go talk to the sergeant. Right. Chose not to. Pulled me over, walked up, just started demanding ID and everything for me. He wouldn't identify himself, none of that good stuff. And then now this is where it's all led to. And I informed him, I have body cams, I have my own recording. And like I said, I have, I have a lot. Okay, but you started out by saying you wanted this dismissed because there was not probable cause for the stop. Correct. Okay. And then you went on to tell me how there was a, obviously a difference in opinion within the department about whether or not what you were doing was legal or not. Well, I is, that a, is that a fair summation? Him. What was that? Is that a fair summation of what you just said? Some of the officers that you talked to said you could do that, and obviously the officer that wrote you the ticket didn't think you could. Correct. Okay, so that's a difference of opinion there, which has very little, if anything, to do with the probable cause for the stop. So I'm going to let the prosecutor explain her position on probable cause. That's it. Go ahead. Thank you, Honor. Uh, defendant is requesting this court dismiss the case because of the accusation that operating an OR on the roadway constitutes a blatant violation of his First Amendment rights and an improper attempt to regulate his constitutional rights. Did she say that he argued that it was, the traffic stop was against his First Amendment rights? Okay, this guy... Uh, wow. Uh, yeah, this, this is just way too stupid for anybody to comprehend at this point. Yeah, the First Amendment has nothing to do with, uh, driving or anything like that. I mean, it has everything to do with freedom of the press, freedom of religion, freedom to assemble, uh, freedom to redress your government, freedom of speech. Uh, none of those have anything to do with, uh, driving or traveling or anything like that. In his most recent motion, he does accurately cite Terry vs. Ohio as controlling. Um, this was plainly a Terry stop. Uh, well, hold on, hold on. His argument is there was no reason for the stop. He does cite Terry vs. Ohio in his motion. Okay. Um, it, because people submit that the investigatory stop exception in Terry vs. Ohio controls the validity of the traffic stop. An officer may stop and briefly detain a person on the basis of reasonable suspicion that criminal activity is employed. Uh, defendant claims that he was stopped without legal justification. Rather, defendant was stopped for operating an ORV on the roadway in violation of MCL 324.81122 as adopted by Hunt Township Ordinance. Uh, pursuant to the United States versus Ferguson, so long as the officer has probable cause to believe that a traffic violation has occurred or was occurring, on authority, um, I'm sorry, the resulting stop is not unlawful and does not violate the law. On authority of state law and township ordinance, a person shall not operate an ORV, which is not registered upon a public highway, street, or right away. On the date and time of the offense, the defendant operated an ORV, which was not registered, specifically an ATV on Middlebelt Road, a public highway in Huron Township. Additionally, during the course of the investigatory stop, the defendant failed to provide a valid driver's license and failed to immediately disclose that he was a valid CPL holder and carrying a firearm, which is why he was cited. All right. So which I object to the hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. So the one misdemeanor is operate the ORV on the roadway, and the other one is fail to display a valid license. That's okay. Right. All right. So that that's her response to your argument. They didn't have probable cause. What's your reply to her response? Well, I object to her terms of operate. They have no, there's no evidence that I was operating anything. Okay, let me stop you. I killed that when I said the whole traveling thing doesn't go anywhere with me. Operating and traveling, as you define operating, or as you define traveling, we define it operating. Right. So hold on, I've already ruled on that issue. You can appeal that decision to the circuit court. We're not going to plow that field again. So now we're talking about probable cause. What I just heard was the, the township has an ordinance that says, Nobody can operate an ORV on a roadway. Would you agree that's an ordinance in the township? 
Your Honor, I may agree yes with that. Yes or no, Mr. Yes, Patel. I agree with that. Okay, stop. If that's a valid or argument or ordinance, and when I say valid, I don't mean if it's constitutional, if it's, you know, stood the test of a challenge. I mean, if it's on the books, all right? If it's a valid ordinance and the officer sees you doing what that ordinance says you can't do, and he pulls you over, that's plenty of probable cause for the stop. So your motion to dismiss for lack of probable cause is also denied. So there you go, Softard. Another one of your stupid little arguments torn up because you failed to use the proper dictionaries. Maybe you should actually uh, look into what the laws actually define these uh, terms as. Maybe it'll help you out. Maybe you need a lawyer. I don't know, but you need a lot of help, not just legally, but uh, cognitively. Do you need me to clarify that ruling for your appeal reasons? Yes, I, yes, I actually, because your honor, I object to what the fact you not only, no sir, RV. Your objections mean shit to me. Okay, I don't care what you're objecting to. You, I don't expect people to like every decision I make. That's why there's an appellate process. So you keep saying I object, I object, I object. I don't care. All right, it's not helpful for today's process. My decision to de to deny your motion to dismiss based on lack of probable cause is because there was probable cause because there was a clear ordinance on the books that the officer thought you were violating. That gives the officer a reason to stop you. Do you have any other reasons why you think these matters should be dismissed today? Yes, absolutely. First off, they're trying to label what my private property is an ORV. It was not an ORV, and it's not even technically an ORV. If you look up the definition of ORV, it's not an ORV. If you look up the definition of automobile or vehicle or any of that sense, that's what it falls under. It does not fall under an ORV. They're just trying to label it as an ORV is what is happening. Okay. That seems like that would be an issue for trial for you to testify, maybe me to see some photographs, maybe the officer to testify, and then I'll decide whether or not it meets the definitions of the statutes. Would you agree with me? Yeah, exactly, Savtar. This is exactly how the process works. You make the claim that the uh, what the officer did was unconstitutional or illegal based upon definitions. You take it to court, and the judge will actually look at what the actual uh, uh, statutes are, the terms, and everything like that. And if he decides that you're in the wrong, you're in the wrong. If he decides that the... Uh, officer is in the wrong then he's in the wrong it's as simple as that dude why can't you comprehend that and if you still think uh, the judge is wrong you can take it to the appeals court and uh, it can go from there so yeah it's not up to you it's still up to the judges because that seems like a triable issue i suppose yes okay well this isn't the trial well i understand i don't that. think it's scheduled for trial right this just motion all right any other issues that you want to hang your hat on is why it should be dismissed, exactly. it being these files. Well, like I said, I, from, from the beginning, it was like the officer had already been notified two times prior to this that what I was doing was lawful, that what I was doing was not an ORV, which I had stated to him. But that's witness but to that Mr. as well. Purcell, with, so respect, again, with respect, that's all your opinion. Obviously, the officer had a different opinion about all those things. Well, right? the officer chose to retaliate against me is what happened, Your Honor which I have the evidence and I have witnesses going on. Or he had a difference of opinion about whether or not you were driving an ORV. Or just didn't understand his, the laws. That, or the could be too. Wording. that could be too. But guess, guess who gets to make those decisions? At trial. Well, I would, well honestly, you know, the trial, I'd request a jury trial, which is guaranteed. Well, you can't get a jury trial on the civil infraction, but you can certainly get a jury trial on the misdemeanors. Absolutely. Okay. Um, do you have anything else to be discussed today on motion day? Well, yeah, and as far as the disclosed the CPL, um, like I said, within, I, I have, again, stating I have the body cams and I have my own recording. So stop. That's going to be an issue at your formal hearing, whether or not you violated that civil infraction. Once again, I got to have evidence, right? I got to take testimony. I'm going to hear from you. I'm going to hear from the officer that wrote the ticket. And then I'm going to decide at formal hearing whether or not what you did was reasonable or not reasonable. But today's just motion day. Today's not the, the trial. No testimony is being taken. Oh, I understand that. Okay. Anything else today? Well, I guess that's no. But like I said, again, for the record, I do object to moving forward. I do object to anything moving forward from this from this point. File your appeal. No, that's fine. I will. File your appeal. I'm going to. That's fine. Okay. All right. 
Now, the 200, let's get back to the $280. We'll, we'll talk about a jury trial date. Are you going to represent yourself at a jury trial? Yes, Your Honor. Good luck. Um, okay, so was the $280 posted as a bond when the initial default happened? I believe so. I, I don't Do you have, have any record of $280? Because we're not getting receipts in the file anymore. I have the receipt right here, Your Honor. Okay. okay. I'll return your 280 today. Anything else today? All right, let's talk about a date for jury trial. September 16th or September 23rd. They're both Monday. Mm, 23rd. 8.30? All right, now, Mr. Crusell, I'm going to strongly suggest that you get an attorney involved in this. Um, and we've got court appointed attorneys, so we'll be happy to talk to you. From this standpoint, I'm not taking you to law school on the jury trial day. I'm going to assume and treat you accordingly that you know the rules of the game. I understand, Your Honor. You don't. Oh, you might under, I you might say that you don't understand the rules. I do. Okay. How many jury trials have you had? None, but I have all the evidence. How many jury trials have you had? Your Honor, none, but I have all the evidence. The evidence isn't the rules. There are a lot of procedural rules that will trip you up if you don't know what you're up against, and you don't. I'm going to suggest to you that even if you want to handle your evidence presentation yourself, you might want to get an attorney involved to help you with the procedural rules. Because once again, I'm not going to take you to law school that day. I'm not going to, I'm not going to subject the jury to that. It be, would be a waste of their time. You understand that? All right, now, and I'm not trying to talk you out of a jury trial. Believe it or not, I'm trying to save you from yourself right now. If you want to have a bench trial, I will be much more lenient with you not knowing what you're doing procedurally, because then it's just our time. But when it's a jury in here, I'm going to run the most efficient jury trial I can, and that means I'm going to treat you like you're an experienced lawyer and know all the rules. Okay. All right? All right. So if you decide, number one, that you don't want a jury trial, you want to do a bench trial, let me know long in advance of that date so we can save it for somebody else. Or two, if you want the assistance of an attorney, I will give you the ability to talk to one of our court appointed attorneys and see if they can assist you in the manner you want to be assisted. Okay. Understood? Yes, sir. Any questions? Nope. Anything else? Yeah. Have a nice day. Well, dude, in my opinion as well, I suggest you get an attorney, a good one. As a matter of fact, because you obviously don't know anything about the procedures and everything like that. You over talk people. You use improper definitions. Uh, man, there's a whole list of issues here that we could go over for hours as far as what you did in this court today. And, uh, well, none of them are any good. So, at an array, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. And I will see you on the next one. This could be some groundbreaking stuff right here. Dude, so there's no way I can get in, bro? Come on, I'll put you on my YouTube. But shut up, Wesley. You gotta put signs up, ma'am, if it's- Are you Glenn Serio? Who's that?